Hey friends, my name is Osama, and in this video, I'm really excited to accept a challenge that I received from a Denmark-based tech company called Copenhagen Atomics. Copenhagen Atomics is developing thorium molten salt reactor technology to support the emerging need for clean energy across the world. In the upcoming months, I'll be exploring nations across the world and one by one delving into their future energy needs and also exploring if nuclear energy is a viable option for them. In this video, I'll be discussing the energy future of a West African nation called Ghana. I'll be going through the nuclear history of Ghana, why small modular reactors are ideal for this nation. Also, what does Ghana's current energy supply and demand look like? And lastly, is Ghana as a nation ready for nuclear energy? Fun fact, the word Ghana means warrior king, and the country gained its independence in the year 1957. Coincidentally, the same year, the very first commercial nuclear power plant was built. Let's look at the nuclear history of Ghana. Now in 1964, the first president of Ghana initiated the Ghana Nuclear Reactor Project, which was intended to introduce nuclear science and technology to the country. Unfortunately, it was abandoned after the first president was removed through a military coup. Things haven't really progressed since then, until now. Ghana has been facing severe electricity shortages for the past decade. This has been affecting its economy a lot, and now it's turning to nuclear as a solution. Also, Executive Director of Nuclear Power Ghana, NPG, believes that Ghana will start to produce electricity from nuclear energy by the year 2030. Also, in, as of 2019, Vice President of Ghana announced that the government has already released funding for the site selection process for a nuclear power plant. Site selection is when you do seismic analysis, you, you see if it's suitable for a nuclear power plant. All right, so what does the government of Ghana think about nuclear energy? Well, President Kufufor supported the building of nuclear power plants and actually developed the Nuclear Power Committee, which is a committee assigned to develop and study the country's energy problems. Also, Ghana's perception of nuclear energy is a really unique perspective in the world because the technology has increasingly been viewed by the government as the dominant, if not the sole solution to Ghana's electricity shortages. Yeah, that's really interesting and I'll dive into why this is happening. Also, the government is taking steps to secure buy-in through public awareness, public outreach, and also educational activities. Maybe Ghana should sponsor my next video talk about why Ghana is a great place for small modular reactors and the answer is its political stability. So out of countries in West Africa, Ghana is considered the, one of the most stable countries. After 92, 1992, when it transitioned into a multi-party democracy, it has successfully organized several general elections after that year. Also, the country is really known to have a good economic management and fiscal discipline when it comes to adherence to recent legislation that was put in place. Also, its economy is also really resilient, which is a positive outlook despite the effects of the coronavirus pandemic that just came most recently. Um, according to the International Trade Administration of the United States, it perceives Ghana as a very stable and predictable political environment for American investors. So when it comes to energy investments in this country, and development of small modular reactors, it's a great location to start that up. So is Ghana ready for nuclear? Well, Ghana over the years has been participating and coordinating research projects actively with the IAEA. And this is with the intention to help develop the nuclear knowledge base in the country. Also, Ghana has experience operating a research reactor, which it's been operating for the past 15 years with a great safety record. And at the moment, its approach to developing a nuclear program follows the IAEA's milestone approach. So this is a phased approach where Ghana will develop the infrastructure needed to support a nuclear program. Although Ghana has passed the first of three milestones, the most difficult task ahead is actually the last phase, which is developing a regulatory framework and institutions to guide the preparation of the construction, bidding, and plant commissioning. In the past three years alone, Ghana has been visited by the IAEA's Integrated Infrastructure Review Team twice. 
and the team is generally satisfied with Ghana's progress with developing its regulatory program, also identification of main stakeholders. All right, so why small modular reactors? Should Ghana even look at this technology or explore it further? Well, SMRs are reactors that range in sizes from around 300 megawatts to even smaller. But these are really ideal for small grids like Ghana's. Ghana has a grid, a countrywide grid of 2,800 megawatts. And just to put that into perspective, I used to work at a power plant, nuclear power plant, which produces around 4,000 megawatts of energy. But this is the entire country's grid. Let's look into some studies that have been done on SMR technology in Ghana. 2006, another study was conducted by UN Energy and the IAEA, which studied a baseline scenario of a 300 megawatt small modular reactor being operational in the country by around the year 2025. Academic researchers identified Ghana as a country with two specific advantages which favored small modular reactors. Number one, smaller utilities with a lower capitalization cost. All right, so if you have smaller utilities, smaller plants located across the country, their cost to run these plants in, in the long run would be a lot smaller than a very large nuclear plant. So finances is probably one of the biggest reasons why. Number two is distributed load and also electricity access to remote communities. Now, if you distribute your load across the country, you're making a more robust grid. Also, you're providing access to those remote communities which may not have reliable energy access. The US Department of Commerce International Trade Administration listed 27 countries as potential markets for small modular reactors. Ghana was rated higher than any other country in Africa. This is above Nigeria, Kenya, or Egypt. Ghanaian officials see financing a nuclear reactor construction as one of the largest obstacles they've got to face, especially when you consider historically that Pakistan is the only country to have successfully implemented a nuclear power program with a GDP of less than 50 billion US dollars. Yeah, running a large scale nuclear power plant is capital intensive, right? It requires funds. And this is really where small modular reactors becomes an option for Ghana to look into. To mitigate this financing issue, a great option for Ghana is to look into investing in the approval cost of a molten salt reactor. So ideally, the Ghanaian government would pay for this approval cost, uh, and it would also pay for the nuclear inspectors that would inspect these reactors. The power plant itself, fuel, operations, and also aspects of running the reactor would be financed by the foreign company like Copenhagen Atomics, who'd use it to build and operate these nuclear power plants in the country. So this would come with the benefit of avoiding large loans and also with potential future problems from other larger nations like Russia, China, or Korea. Copenhagen Atomics offers really unique partnership opportunities for developing countries like Ghana. For example, nuclear energy as a service. This is an all-encompassing comprehensive service and a really unique approach. What they, what they propose is that they would finance the building of a nuclear reactor, they would build it, they would also own it, operate it, and eventually even decommission these reactors. How Copenhagen Atomics proposes to do this is to develop partnerships with other companies that would take care of the secondary side of these plants. So the way a nuclear power plant works is there's a primary side, which is the reactor. It's where the nuclear reaction takes place, produces the heat, clean source of heat. The secondary side of a, of a power plant is the same as any other power plant, like a coal power plant, a natural gas power plant, where they take this heat, use it to boil water, produce steam and spin turbines, create electricity. So Copenhagen Atomics would only take care of the first aspect, which is the reactor side. The secondary side would be developing partnerships with companies that are traditionally making coal power plants or natural gas power plants, but rather they would be focused on steam generators, the turbines and operating those areas and maintaining them. Um, also, you can equip the secondary side to desalinate water, create fresh drinking water, or you could also use it for uh, industries like mining, so for process heat. Now, as natural gas and coal power plants are slowly getting phased out, these companies, they're looking at how to integrate their expertise into sustainable energy options, and one of which is nuclear. So this is a really cool way in which they can start working with a nuclear uh, company like Copenhagen Atomics. These companies would pretty much buy heat, buy that process heat from the waste burner reactor that Copenhagen Atomics is making, 
and then this heat can be used for producing electricity, for industrial heat, hydrogen production, and also desalination of water. Adding 20 100 megawatt smaller units, reactor units, across the nation would really help with grid stability and also providing consistent electricity to large load areas like major cities and also rural areas. This would help strengthen Ghana's grid as opposed to installing a large nuclear power plant which would need to be refueled for outages. Another great idea for Ghana is to strengthen its grid with neighboring nations. This would come with the benefit of increasing stability and minimizing risk for investors. Investors are willing to invest capital into these projects if this is the case. What does Ghana's current energy supply and production look like? Well, over the past 10 years, Ghana's electricity demand has grown at a rate of 7% per year. It's high population growth, and it's also its decision to extend its grid to rural areas to pursue economic development has really left its electricity supply unable to meet its demands. So recently I was reading an article on Ghana's electricity consumption that projected its, its increase by the year 2030. So this article was written in the year 2017 and it projected a, a, a rise electricity consumption by around 9.56 billion kilowatt hours. When I looked up what Ghana's current uh, electricity consumption is in the year 2021 or 2019 to 2021, the number came at 9.36 billion kilowatt hours. It just goes to show how quickly Ghana's electricity consumption is increasing. Even projections are having difficulty keeping up. Let's go through this pie chart that I created of the sources of energy, uh, whether it be oil, natural gas, hydro, or solar. Um, and let's start off with oil. Oil is basically a new resource that Ghana has introduced into its electricity mix. And this is because of its newfound reserves in Ghana. Natural gas is something that is constantly on the rise because of its uh, cheap cost. Uh, hydro is something that it fluctuates because of adverse effects from climate change causing droughts. It simply isn't enough water in the reservoir at times for these uh, turbines to run. Solar PV is, that, is very, very, very fractional. And the reason why is because Ghana is still in the process of installing more solar production capacity. So I'll go through these one by one, starting off with oil. Oil is comes at 3.9% of the country's electricity production. Natural gas is overwhelming majority right now, 58.8%. Hydro at 37%. Hydro used to be a lot more. It used to be greater than 60 to 70% of the, of the country's electricity mix. But slowly that's, that's dropping because Ghana has pretty much maxed out its hydroelectric generation production. And also solar PV, which is at 0.29%. The country is really looking at bumping that up by installing large, uh, large solar capacity. Another chart I'd like to share uh, is Ghana's electricity consumption in terawatt hours. Now, as you can see from 2016 to the year 2020, uh, within around 15 to 20 years of time, you can see that drastic increase in consumption of electricity. There is a huge demand for electricity in this country and as the population is growing as industries are increasing as ghana is increasing in prosperity each individual is cons consumes more electricity more energy people's quality of life increases this trend this this trend is in it's projected to rise even higher now over the last 28 years the country has gone through three major power outages these power outages happen so frequently that there's actually a word in Ghana, which is there to describe these power outages. The word is called dumb sore, which means off on. So these power outages have really had a devastating impact on Ghanaian industries, which spend around 40% of their money on electricity to produce goods. Whereas in most countries, that amount is around 20%. In the year 2014 alone, the impact of the electricity crisis led to a daily production loss of around $2.1 million per day. You know, if you look at it across a year span, it's around $680 million. That's 2% of the overall GDP of the country. Ghana is in a really peculiar situation. It has really limited its potential for domestic hydro, hydro production, okay, because all of its hydro reservoirs have pretty much been capped out. Also, it has a very high cost related to importing natural gas and oils, and also doesn't have a large scale plan to pursue renewables. This is why Ghana has 
really kept its eye on nuclear energy. It's betting its options on that resource. I think it may, it may prove to be successful. We'll have to see. By the year 2030, Ghana's population will rise to around 38 million people. So this anticipates a rise in industrial and residential electricity demands. A technology must be selected according to Ghana's grid size and also long-term energy goals. Overall, I think going nuclear is a really positive step in the right direction. It's exciting to see Ghana take this leap of faith and make strides toward a nuclear program, especially when it comes to the African continent. I really enjoyed making this video and doing research when it comes to Ghana and their energy future. I would love to hear from you guys. What are some of the questions that you have? Please comment in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.